G'day guys, uh, my name's Joel, I'm also called The Zookeeper and I'm a sunny coast based artist in Queensland. The last uh, five or six years I've been mainly painting things in pretty far out places. So central Queensland or down in New South Wales or Victoria. I basically travel pretty long distances on some fun adventures with good mates and paint things like silos and water towers or just big, big walls anywhere really. Our work usually is about trying to represent the place that we travel to and that's always pretty fun because we get to meet all types of um, interesting people along the way and get to hear their stories and a lot of the time you just find out there's just so much about a place that you wouldn't exactly expect when you first um, look it up on Wikipedia before you go there. You just guess you, you get exposed to all these interesting people and interesting things along the way. I got a really cool little project that I'm about to jump into with my good buddy Drapple. We're heading up to Biloela, which is central Queensland, and we're going to paint a stack of small silos. So these are little steel ones. Um, never really painted small steel silos before, so it should be pretty fun. Typically, before I go, I'll make a bit of a list. So I usually pack like a doomsday prepper and just bring everything that I could imagine that I might need. I usually kind of consists of like boxes and boxes of spray paint and then heaps and heaps of buff or acrylic exterior house paint. Uh, so I got a bit of a list together. Um, I'll, I'll show you a bit of my list because I, I don't know if it's interesting to you, but I think like, I guess if you're thinking about maybe painting this kind of work, you want to you want to know some of the gear we might use. Probably the biggest tool I have is this spray, spray gun here. It's a Graco 390 cordless. This lets me spray all types of house paint um, over walls. So I could probably paint the inside of this shed in about five minutes if I just loaded it up and just went ham around it. So obviously that's a pretty useful tool for painting large structures. The other thing is the spray paint. So. Um, I love using spray paint. I, I guess I was a little graffiti writer when I was a kid. Over the last sort of few years, I've been more delving into working with brushes and acrylic because I just feel like it's a little bit more versatile. So here's my stash currently. Um, there's all types of paint here. Um, I'm not, I don't really have a strong preference as to you know what the best brands are, but personally, um, I love brands like Wattle, like Torbman's or Dulux um, and I try and mainly use like products that have like a good warranty on them because you want these things to last and you want the people that you're making them for to have them for a very long time or as long as they could be so yeah so yeah pretty much packed up the ute and ready to go um, last couple of things are all my camera gear and I often like take heaps of photos of th the things I'm painting so yeah carry all my my camera gear and load that up Things like drones and stuff like that. So last bit of gear to put together and then I'm gonna hit the road early tomorrow morning, probably like 5 a.m. or something like that. So I'll see you then, bye. Hey guys, so uh, I've spent the last four hours on the road driving, um, left pretty early this morning, but I'm not too far off Biloela. Um, just thought I'd stop in at an old work that Drapple and I painted, um, I think it was, mid 2020 so a year and a half ago uh, it's the three moon silos and it's they're I think about 25 meters tall but they're one of a heap of different works we've done in Monto actually so this is the bigger one we did we also did a water tower and then maybe half a dozen other murals scattered throughout the town um, so it's a big part of my story as a large-scale artist so there it is jump back on the road and keep going Right on, we made it. And there they are. Little steelies, just painting the three N1s now. And there's Travi, his new cruiser. Big dog. Oh, Shocking. you're making a mess already. His new toy, the man of many toys. My baby. Yeah, show us the mods. All right, we've got the step down. Yeah. I've actually been giving it a little play before you come here. <laughs> Just to make it pretty for me. <laughs> nah, I want to see it muddy. You see, so the new paint bus good as it gets. Uh, yeah, just having a quick look at um, where these silos are actually going to be viewed from. And realistically, as you come into town, you see them on a bit of an angle. Pretty much looking to um, 
have the key points on this silo here because that's the main one you see and then on the front face of each of them so what we're going to do is go for a bit of a drive and we're going to go out to the farm uh, the mung bean farm where a lot of the produce is grown and try and figure out the scene here and get a few photos so Travi's taken me in his beast big new v8 beast go for a bit of an adventure yeah, big boy so we've uh, narrowed down um, what we're trying to trying to photograph. We're going to photograph um, the fellow who runs this farm holding his mung beans. So we're going to get him to kneel down in the field and just sort of basically show us um, the mung beans that he, he's grown. And we'll get a shot of him kneeling. So we'll see how it actually turns out. You can eat them. They're like a green pea, you know, like a fresh oh, wow. green pea. That's lovely. Nice and green, yeah. <laughs> yeah I cook these, I cook them in dials and mm. things like that. People want to know more about you guys. Awesome, I reckon we got some gems, man. Thank you. Yeah, so after a few hours of editing back at our, our accommodation, we came up with a design um, based on some of those images we put together. But basically what I'm doing now is I'm getting the sky colors that we're looking for. So we're looking for sort of soft pale blue sky. So I'm gonna mix um, into a big drum of 10. I'm just gonna mix a big range of, of blue sky that we can knock onto the silos and then we'll um, chuck in some of the greens uh, and the horizon line later on today. So we made a bit of a rookie error. We put some old paint we had through a stocking which actually had grit paint in it so little particles of sand in it and it's just absolutely wreaking havoc with the poor little spray gun there's just really fine sand going through the through the filter and blocking it Good morning and welcome to day two on this mural. We had a pretty busy last night. So on the left hand side we've got old mate reaching down holding some mug beans. And then we've got dog running through the field. All these darker marks here are just basically um, mung bean leaves and stuff. <coughs> so we've got a bit of, of an idea of scale. Bit of a mess right now but should make sense eventually. Uh, over here is a cockatoo on an old hardwood fence post. So I'm going to just start mixing up paint, getting everything unloaded from the ute and we'll um, get cracking while the sun's low in the sky. So this is probably one of the most useful things you can have when you're painting up on lift. And they're just essentially little compartments that we make pallets, different pallets out. Um, and it just means that you're not having all of these massive tins stored at your feet when you've got pretty limited space. You can have your colors right there and you can mix between each of them. Beautiful. Got to be sun smart at 6 a.m. when it's already close to 30 degrees. And this is our little rabbit setup. warren everything we need to get going. Beautiful work, Travi. Out. 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 It is cooking, Some cooking up here. Sun really warm. struggling. But, you know, we'll just, like nothing to it. Like you want to go home yet? <laughs> oh, I don't think it's going to be far off. <laughs> be an early session. Yeah, this is actually probably one of my favorite parts about painting um, is, is using like a wet on wet approach. So usually I'll have my spritzer filled with water and I'll spray the wall itself like this. Just get it quite damp. And then I'll go on with say a light color like this. I'll just lay it in a few different spots on that wet, like that. And then I'll come back with something a bit darker beside what I've been working on and just work these things together. And I'm making just leaves here, so it doesn't actually matter a huge amount. I'm not really replicating anything. I'm just laying down base and we'll probably build over the top with spray paint in a few spots, like so. It's working. It's working. Just keep working this stuff around like so. 
it looks pretty horrible right now but from back there it'll just add a whole heap of texture and layers to this big section of leaves so it's I think it's eight o'clock and I, we're probably gonna have to tap out because I'm cooking Ravi down there he's wanting wanting to go home too so I think we're gonna have a little um, morning siesta which might last for most of today. So we've ended up with a pretty decent setup for our accommodation. Um, often we're staying in like dongers, crappy little containers and motel rooms and stuff like this. But we've got our own little Queenslander, which is um, the farmhouse. We're loving life. The only downside is um, sharing single room with Travi. Uh, last night I slept for three hours because he's a chainsaw. <sighs> This is what makes Trav a bit of a beast to work with. He just, he just does the hard work. So we're having trouble getting things level and he's just shoveling dirt. Doing a bloody good job. This is a med roller. These things are super useful. So you can use the end of it and roll in textures. But realistically, they just allow you to mix things wet on wet on the wall. Slap it on, work it in, work it out. Morning, it's five o'clock on the rock o'clock and we're ready to shoot like a mung bean. So we're down here at the silos for day two and what we're gonna work on is really ripping through this background through here. So yesterday we had a really solid day working on this end silo here. It's not finished, but you can see it's sort of coming to life there. Heaps of greens, a lot of vibrancy in it, which we really love. Actually, we're gonna start on this this morning two cockatoos sitting on this timber fence. The Travi's just knocking in the fence rail and the background. And then I'll jump up there with some greys and whites with him in the bucket and just start really layering in the, the feathers and the depth in those cockatoos. They're gonna look pretty sick together. I'm pumped to jump up on that. So here we go. Yeah, we've got it a little bit bogged. Uh, it's not looking pretty. We've managed to dig the wheels of this not off-road scissor into the ground. So there's really only one way to get it out and it's to tow it. So yep. what's going on. Yep. Good work. Gravy's back on the shovel, filling in the, the grave for um, our little scissor. One of the things we like to do when we're having a bit of a break is, is to come back pretty far away and actually sit down somewhere where other people might see it. It helps you sort of see it from a new perspective and you can see the things that are working and the things that aren't. So um, yeah, a really important thing to do is jump back, get a proper glimpse of it and then come back with some fresh eyes. So again, it's uh, nine o'clock and it's way above 30. So we've decided to have our siesta <laughs> for six hours or so um, but we're gonna go check out some cool things around Biloela I think there's a dam out of town and there's also some kind of rock pool or rock hole so we're gonna try and figure out where they are and hopefully go for a swim so we pulled up to this pretty cracking spot out on the dam I don't think we're gonna swim it's pretty weedy and gross but um, I don't really go anywhere without my fishing rods so I might try and catch a catch a little fish See how we go. Well, didn't catch anything. Probably a hundred fish watching my lure swim by their head. Going, nah, not interested. Nice spot though. How's that? That mountain range in the background, pretty much 100% what we're aiming to sort of paint off in the distance. Morning legends. This morning we're out here at the Australian Mung Bean Company in Biloela. Um, it's a beautiful morning. Yeah, good morning. Well, we've pretty much built the full scene now. We've just got a couple of little gaps just in here to try and get some of this going on. Looks pretty complicated, but it's not. It's just building lines and shapes and then as it comes forward, it gets a little bit more vibrant. So yeah, pretty stoked with that, how that's looking. I think it's, um, it's almost there. The mountains up in the background look 
look pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to crank this last little bit here. Trav's going to grab coffees and then I'm going to jump in the car and head off. So my time's come to get out of Biloela. Um, I've got to get back to Sunny Coast. Travi's going to wrap this one up probably over the next 24 hours. Loving where we've gotten to in this time frame. Oh, there's heaps of depth in this one. I think we just get better at creating that depth every time. We'd, we'd love another couple of days to just keep refining, but you know, sometimes you just got to do what you can do in the time frame that you've got. Um, so yeah, it's been heaps of fun. I'll show you the finished result in a few days time. See you, mate. See you, bro. Thanks for having us, man. For Enjoy. Don't get too sunburned. You're doing a good job, you drongo! Okay, she's all finished. I'm about to put a clear coat on this thing. Very nice little sign off over here. It's got a great deal of depth going on. So thanks for coming along on that journey, guys. We had a heap of fun. I'm spewing. I didn't get to stay for the final day, uh, but Travi knocked it out. So good on you, Trav. Next up is Cowra down in New South Wales, and I'm going to bring you along for the ride. So if you like what you're seeing, then hit the subscribe button. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.